Amen. Amen. from coming back from death to life. There's nothing in the world that can stop our God. Amen? Amen.
that they might truly uh, receive freedom and God just to be worked on from the inside out. Everybody in this room, please God, yeah. let them know, Jesus, that you have come to set them free, God. Not just to not just to save them, but to set them free, God. So God, please let them all walk in victory. Let them know that victory is forever. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
you have been seated, Mr. Matty. Just know that when I was going to church when I was a kid, uh, we, I would hear this often, we have to go to church. Y'all ever heard that before? Some of y'all said it to your kids. We have to go to church today. Well, I'm tired. I don't want to go to church. We have to. Like, God's going to strike you down if you don't. You know, like, like he's going to be mad at you if you're not here. You know, like, he, we have to instead of, like, we want to. We, we, we enjoy the things of God. In chapter 8 of Nehemiah, God has rebuilt the wall. When Nehemiah found Israel, uh, when he found uh, uh, the walls around uh, Jerusalem, they had been torn down. But not only had the walls been torn down, but the people had been torn down. And sometimes I think we miss that part of Nehemiah is with building the walls, God was also building the people. And in Nehemiah chapter 7, uh, he has brought them all uh, into uh, their their tribes and they're you know registering the people get who this is who that is where they belong this family and making sure who is here and, and doing some numbers things and then in uh, Ezra chapter number eight Ezra begins to read the law and it's one thing you know they haven't heard in a long time they hadn't heard the word of God. They're just now coming back. The walls have been rebuilt, rebuilt, and now they're reading the Word of God. Now, if you haven't heard the Word of God in your generation, or, or you haven't truly been taught the Word of God, when you really get the true Word of God, it seems like almost too much to bear. Anybody ever, anybody know what I'm talking about? Amen. Like, when I preach on Sunday, I know some of you are overwhelmed um, by what I say and by what God expects, and that's okay. It's alright. So it's okay to think, how in the world am I going to do that? Because with the help of the Spirit, you're going to be able to. And, and these people in, in Nehemiah chapter 8, they were overwhelmed. It says in October, when the Israelites had settled in their towns, all the people assembled with a unified purpose at the square, just inside the water gate. They asked Ezra the scribe to bring out the book of the law of Moses. When the Lord had given... Uh, which the Lord had given to Israel to obey. So the Word of God is meant to obey, but they didn't know the Word of God. They didn't know what the Word of God said. This is the first five books probably of the Old Testament, the Pentateuch. This is the, the books of Moses. They are bringing out, and Ezra the prophet, Ezra the scribe, is going to be reading the Word of God. They are going to be doing uh, what they should have been doing all along, teaching uh, the Word of God. So uh, just get this picture. Everybody's gathered and they are watching. They are attentive. They are listening to every word that Ezra says. So on October the 8th, Ezra the priest brought the book of the law before the assembly, which included the men and the women, and the children old enough to understand. He faced the square just inside the water gate. From early morning until noon, and read aloud to everyone who could understand. All the people listened closely to the book of the law. Ezra the scribe stood on a high wooden platform that had been made for this occasion. To his right stood uh, Mattiah, Shema, Aniah, Uriah, Hilkiah, Messiah. And if we just put them eyes on the end of our names, we could all have names that kind of the life, you know? That would make mine easier than those to say. To his left stood Padiah, Michelle, Malkaja, Hashem, and Hashbadana, Zechariah, and Meshulam. I should have skipped these verses. <laughs> Ezra stood on the platform in view, full view of all the people. When they saw him open the book, they all rose to their feet. So they even knew the word of God had a great, uh, it, it deserved great respect. They had great reverence for the word of God what was being preached and what was being said. They, they knew that uh, they were supposed to do these things. So they rose to their foot. Then Ezra praised the Lord, the great God, and all the people chanted, Amen, Amen, as they lifted their hands. You wonder where we get that. Why do we lift our hands? Because people in the Bible lifted their hands when they were praising God. As they lifted their hands and they bowed down and worshipped the Lord with their faces to the ground. The Levites and all those names then instructed the people in the law 
while everyone remained in their places. They read from the book of the law of God clearly and clearly explained the meaning of what was being read and the people and helped the people understand each passage. So what they did was they just brought it out. Nobody had heard it in years. They brought it back to the center. People respected the word of God and now they are not only telling it but they're explaining it. A good preacher will do that. A good preacher, a good teacher not only gives you the word of God but they explain what it's being, what's being said so everybody can understand what's going on. Everything that's being read, everybody understands. In verse 9, Nehemiah the government, governor, Ezra the priest and the scribe and the Levites who were interpreting for the people said to them, Don't mourn or weep on such a day as this. For day is the sacred day before the Lord your God. For the people had all been weeping as they listened to the words of the law. So imagine the picture now. They, they, the walls, like it's celebration, walls, rebuilt, protection, God's here, the people are back, everything's going on. And when they start reading the Word of God, everybody starts weeping. The power of the Word of God, the pressure of the Word of God, the, the weight of the Word of God. Everything you read in the Word of God is what we're supposed to live by and what we're supposed to believe and how we're supposed to act. And they're hearing this, uh, some of them, for the first time. And they've all been scattered. And, and, and they're just like, they, they're overwhelmed by all that God is telling them. And that's why I said sometimes you might get overwhelmed by all that God's saying. And, and then don't do this and do do this and act like this and, and don't go here and go here. And, and for them, it was so much greater. If you think that you've got it hard. You had it nothing like the people of the law did because you've never been under the law. A Gentile has never been under the law, the book of Galatians says. So we could plant anything where we wanted to in a garden. We could we could use the bathroom anywhere we wanted to. We could be in the house with a, a lady. It was her time of the month. They couldn't even do that. I mean, all of these things, they had all of these very strict things, the way the temple had to be built and the way uh, the, the priest had to wear and all the, I mean, it was just over over and over and like you couldn't even plant certain things in the garden in certain rows next to each other and if you did after this year you had to change it and it was just these tight you couldn't wear like wool blend you know like you couldn't wear uh, uh, shirts and stuff that was blended materials have you ever thought about how hard it would have been to bend them yeah. like I mean and you think you know love God with all your heart and love your neighbor's heart Everybody's got a wool blend shirt. You know what I mean? Like it's like, like we we put all this in for them. We're like, well, nothing like what's going on here. And, and, and about uh, the Ten Commandments, and then six hundred more laws added on to that, and the high Sabbaths, and the Sabbaths, and the the holy days, and the just everything that was just overwhelming them. They are reading this, and they're going. How in the world, what in the world, we're all condemned. We're all no good. There's no way I can do all this. And they are mourning and weeping. They are crying. It is hurting them because the Word of God is so strict. And it is because it was showing them that they couldn't live up to the law of God. They were needing the Savior. They were needing God to send a Redeemer, a Messiah. And they were all understanding it. And it was just too much for them. But Ezra and Nehemiah, they're all saying, don't, don't cry. Don't weep. Don't be upset, for this is a special day. For today is a sacred day. For all the people that have been weeping. And Nehemiah continued and said, go and celebrate with a feast of rich foods and sweet drinks. And share gifts of food with people who have nothing prepared. For this is a sacred day before the Lord. Don't be dejected and sad. For the joy of the Lord is your strength. The last couple of weeks, it's been more like a job a lot of days. It's been more like a, I have to be at church have to do this and I have to do that. But Saturday night, God spoke real plain to me. Some of you that were here, if you weren't here Saturday night, you missed a blessing. Yeah. And it was unreal. But 
I got to laughing during the during the music, and everybody, I'm sure you heard me because I was captain. And uh, and I was just thinking, God was saying like, no matter what the job, no matter what the task, no matter how bad you are, no matter what I've said, no matter what's going on around you, inside of you, the joy of the Lord is your strength. Amen. I just, I just had to be reminded about that, just like they reminded the Jews here. Look, you don't think you can live up to this. You know you haven't lived up to it so far. This is overwhelming. This is too much to bear. But he said, go celebrate. Go enjoy yourselves. Go, you know, like Solomon. Eat, drink, and be merry. Have a good time. And understand the joy of the Lord as your strength will say, hey, how can you say that? When all this stuff's going on, when all this stuff in my life, you don't understand what I'm going through. You don't understand where I'm at in order. And you're telling me to have joy in the Lord and and in and, and, and his strength to be lifted up. You just don't understand where I'm at. Yes, I do understand where you're at. And what you're doing is you're elevating the situation over the Savior. Like you're looking at this thing in front of you and you're going, oh my gosh. And you've elevated this issue or whatever's in your life to something bigger than it is and you've taken that weight upon yourself instead of going to the throne of God where, you know, Matthew chapter 11, Jesus makes it plain. He says, Come unto me, all you are burdened heavy laden, and I will give you rest. I will give you rest. You rest in the Lord. You take whatever that burden is. Like these Israel, they didn't like have to do this on their own. God was with them. The presence of God was with them. Everything was being rebuilt. God's Spirit was moving in Nehemiah and Ezra and the, the Word of God was lost but now it's found and even though it's hard and even though we don't understand it all, even though we don't, listen, they probably understood it better than we do, even though we don't have a full grasp on all that's going on, We've got to quit letting all this stuff and all these things in our lives and all this church work and we got so much going on and our kids and our and the ball games and it's just like we're just wide open. We get drugged down. God's saying, let my joy be your strength. What's inside of you makes a difference. Whatever you're feeding is what's going to be the strongest. You ever heard that? So if you're feeding your habit, your habit's the strongest. If you're feeding pessimism, I pessimism, 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 good word, bro. If you're feeding that, you're going to be pessimistic. If you're feeding anger, you're going to be angry. If you're, if you're feeding doubt, you're going to be doubtful. If you're feeding faith, you're going to have greater faith. If you're feeding joy, it's going to be joy unspeakable and full of glory. If you're feeding the, the patience, the long-suffering, the things of the Spirit, if you're being fed by the Spirit, the things of the Spirit are growing inside of you and they are going to come out of you. And then it's just like, yeah, I've got to go to work Monday, but I don't have to. I want to because I know that what God has called me to do is a great thing and He's going to enable me. And then I started getting back into the places where I just sought God and I worshiped God and I spent time with God and, and, and then like that's all I want that's all I need, that's all I've ever needed, I don't need anybody, I just need Him and I need His Spirit and I need Him in the morning in the closet space in order for me to just be full of the glory of God and do what I have to do as your pastor no matter what in the world anybody else does, I have to feed that inner man, I have to feed that spirit man, I have to get back to the place where the joy of the Lord Lord is my strength. Most of the time, a lot of people don't give encouragement, right? Most of the time, people aren't patting you on the back. Most of the time, you know, I just expect you to do what you're supposed to do. And I'm trying to get better at encouraging, I promise. I'm not, real, I'm not doing real good right now, but I'm, I'm getting better, I think. Uh, but I just want to encourage you tonight to press into God. And don't you don't have to go to church. Don't come to church because you have to. You don't have to serve the Lord. You don't have to give an offering. God would rather you not give it. If He's going to be mad when you give it, just keep your $2. When you get right with God, you'll give it 20 instead of 2 
I mean, think about these things. You don't have to. I gotta go to church three times a week. No, please don't. Please, please don't. Please just come once, and when you get right with God, you'll enjoy the other two times. You know what I'm saying? Like, like I got it. I got. Oh, you know. And then it's just like, man, you know. And we just rob, and then you rob the joy of other people, and everybody's like, what's wrong with them? And we come here to get built up, and we get torn down. You know, we got to get to the place where the inside of us is just as real as the outside of us. And the smile on our face is not one we put on when we come through the back door, but we are actually resting in the, the joy of God that we are celebrating. When's the last time somebody said, let's go celebrate Jesus? Yeah. i got to go to church. No, you don't. You're messing up the spirit with that attitude. Let's go celebrate Jesus. When's the last time you said that on a Sunday morning? Amen. Let's go. Let's go celebrate life. Let's go celebrate the Savior. You say, well, that sounds kind of self-centered. I'm going to go celebrate. Nehemiah said, go celebrate. Have a good time. Eat and drink and just enjoy yourselves. And understand, this is a sacred day. This is the day where God came back and showed you how much He loved you by giving you back His Word and rebuilding these walls and sending you a prophet and a, and a man of God and a, and a priest like that. So this is a special day. This is a holy day. And this is a day worth celebrating. Go out and have a good time. Don't be dejected and don't be sad. And he said the Levites quieted the people. Tell them, hush. Quit mourning. Quit weeping. Be quiet. For this is a sacred day. So the people went away and ate and drank at the festival meal to share gifts of food and celebrate with great joy because they had heard God's Word. And when you hear God's Word and you understand God's Word, no matter what position you're in, whether you've got it all figured out or whether you're at the bottom of the ladder just fixing to climb up it, no matter what's going on in your life, when you hear the Word of God and understand the Word of God and those things go on in your life, it's reason to celebrate to know God loves me. God loves me right where I'm at. God doesn't wait. God's not waiting to love me when I get better. God loves me just to, just like I am. He loved me enough to give me the word. He loved me enough to show me what to do. I know I'm not there yet, but I'm just going to celebrate the God I know, the God who loves me, the God who saved me. I'm going to celebrate the, the church that God's given me and the, the friends that God's given me. I'm going to just be happy and I'm going to be joyous and I'm just going to enjoy life. I'm, I, you know, I'm going to I'm going to make sure that my heart notifies my face that I've been. Saved. Saved. That way it'll put a smile on every now and then. I'm going to, I'm going to not, I, this is not a game I'm playing. This is not a falsehood or a fake or a mask. I'm actually going to live in the joy of the Lord. Amen. No matter what the situation is. If you're, if you're broke, live in the joy of the Lord. If you're rich, live in the joy of the Lord. If you've got everything you need, if you're needing some things right now, live in the joy of the Lord because you know He's going to supply all your needs according to His yes. riches and glory in Christ Jesus. Every situation, I don't care how bad it is, you can look at it if you're a child of God and you're going after Him and He's going to take it and turn it into uh, good for you. He's going to use it yes. towards your good in the kingdom of God. You can Anything that happens, you can live in the joy of the Lord. Let it be your strength. Let it be what propels you. Let it be what wakes you up in the morning. Waking up, singing praises. Going to bed, singing praises. Lifting your holy hands. Bowing on your face before God. Enjoying the Word of God. The Word of God. You know, we are so blessed. Not like uh, Israel here. Israel's blessed at this point because the Word of God is being reopened and the people are understanding it. But we are so blessed that every day we can get up and we can dive into the Word of God which forever changes our lives and our minds and our hearts. And we see what God's got for us. We see what God wants us to do. We see all the things that God is telling us to do. We see how to do those things. We see how to live by faith and not by sight. We, see, we just know what God has said. It's such a blessing. Just like for Israel, we are so much more blessed as we have the whole Word of God. They had the first five books of the Old Testament. Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy. They had the first five books. I have to do that sometimes when I'm doing math with my son. Y'all ever do that? Eleven minus seven. McGee, you hear that? I have to take my shoes off. Huh? You can't do that no more? Oh. I'm in trouble. Well, that's what I've been teaching. Just think about uh, what God's doing in your life. And 
God will have to help me with math if I'm going to help my children. I know that. I'm not very good at it. But I just want to encourage you. Enjoy life. Enjoy the Lord. Enjoy each other. Quit crying and weeping. Quit, quit being dejected and thrown down. And oh, poor me and woe is me. And can't, how can you believe? Oh, just, just listen. Trust the Lord. Lean not to your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge Him. He will direct your path. Trust the Lord. Trust the Lord. Trust the Lord. And let His joy be your strength. It's time for a bunch of happy Christians to enter into the world. Instead of all the ones who've had to do this, have had to do this, I'm tired. I don't want to, I don't want to have to be your pastor. I want to enjoy being your pastor. You know what I'm saying? I don't want you to have to come to church. I want you to enjoy coming to church. I just feel like sometimes we get so legalistic with all of this where it's got to keep this, got to keep this, got to do this, but we forget it's about relationship with Jesus. When you get relationship right, that other stuff will work itself out and you will live in the joy of the Lord. The joy of the Lord will be your strength. And he will just keep working in you. What God has started in you He's going to finish with what the scripture says, what he's doing for you. He's got your best interest in mind in his kingdom. Everything that God's ever said, if you'll look at what you're going through through the lenses of God's word, then with a smile on your face and joy in your heart. See, joy is fruit of the Spirit, right? Is that right? Amen. So if the joy of the Lord is your strength and you can't get joy, that means the Spirit is not full in your life. The joy of the Lord is our strength. The fruit of the Spirit, the Holy Spirit of God resting inside of you, gives you peace, joy, patience, long suffering, kindness, and goodness. What else? Gentleness, goodness, self control. Man, that's the best one right there. A lot of people say, I just couldn't help you. Yeah, you can. You got the Spirit, you can. Temperance. Self control. I can do what God wants me to do every time because I have the Spirit of God inside of me. I have no reason to mess up if God's Spirit is full inside of me. True story. So joy and peace and all of that just get filled with the Spirit of God. He has sealed you until the day of redemption and He is constantly filling you as you are pressing into the things of God. He is filling you up, filling you up until you overflow and the things that is in you comes out of you and you live that way in the midst of all the people. Looked like a bad day for Nehemiah and them. Everybody was weeping, but it was a pretty good one. You say, well, we live in a bad day. Listen to me. No, we live in a good day. Every day we live is a good day to be alive. Every day we live is a good day to serve God. I just want to encourage you. Enjoy. Enjoy God. Enjoy the things of God. Enjoy this church. Let's have a good time. Okay? a whole lot of churches around here that ain't smiling and ain't having a good time. The moment we quit having a good time, I'm, I'm all for locking them doors and going to find somewhere where they're having one. Prayer request tonight. Anything on your heart or on your mind before we go? Anybody? Anybody?